In this video, I'll be doing an unboxing, setup and review of the Trezor Safe 5. The Trezor Safe 5 was recently released by Trezor and is taking the place of the Trezor Model T as the new top of the line hardware wallet from Trezor, which includes the most features and functionality of any of their devices. So in this video, I was running through the basic hardware setup, comparing it a bit to the Trezor Safe 3, as well as just mentioning some of the differences between this and the previous model Trezor T. In terms of transparency, I bought this hardware with my own money. There's no freebies here, so let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Right, so this is just how it comes packaged. Let's open it up. So this is everything that comes in the box. Comes with a standard sort of getting started guide, nothing spectacular or complicated there. Comes with two wallet backup sheets. Uh, these are the new 20 word default standard that the Safe 5 is using. We'll talk more about that later. It comes with some recovery stickers, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and then we have the Trezor Safe 5 itself. So the device itself just comes with a standard sort of screen protector on there that we can peel off and a security sticker on the bottom over the USB-C port. So we'll just peel that off as well. And there we go, all of the security sticker stuff is removed. So pretty much the hardware is very straightforward. There's just a micro SD slot on the side and that is it. There are no buttons on here or anything else because this is a touch screen. This is very similar to the Trezor Model T, both in terms of the physical size of the device, the size of the screen, the USB-C port, and the micro SD slot. Though you can see that the Safe 5 is a uh, slightly slimmer device and obviously has a more modern aesthetic going for it. Though one of the interesting features that was removed from the Model T was the magnetic back plate. Uh, you can sort of stick it onto any uh, steel surface and it would hold onto there quite nicely, whereas the uh, Trezor Safe 5, that has been removed. So you may not have even realized your Trezor T could do that. Uh, you might not care, but some people may. So it's not there in the Safe 5. And if we compare this to all of the other Trezor models, we can see that just like the Trezor T was a bit bigger than the original Model 1, the Trezor Safe 5 is a bit bigger than the Trezor Safe 3. Though obviously a big part of the difference with these devices is their large color screens. So let's run through the setup. All right, so first things first, let's power it up. And we'll just follow the instructions. So let's go to trezor.io slash start. So if we head over to trezor.io slash start, it's gonna want us to download Trezor for desktop. Alternatively, we can actually do all of this in our browser, though generally it's gonna be better in terms of security and usability to use the desktop app. So we'll just download that. And then once the download has finished, we will just run the file. And we'll just install it with all the defaults. There we go. And at the end, we'll say run Trezor Suite. So when we first run Trezor Suite with our new device detected, this is what we will see. So I will just say, set up my Trezor. First thing's gonna happen is it's gonna install the firmware. We'll just stick with Universal. And there we go. So we'll just do the genuine check on the device, which is a new feature on the Safe Vibe that Trezor T did not have. So we'll swipe up. Tap to confirm. There you go, your Safe 5 is ready to go. Continue. So let's say create new wallet. And this is where I'll point out that the default backup type for this wallet is a single share 20 word slip 39 backup. And this is different to what are labeled as legacy backup types, which is a 12 or 24 word seed that you might be used to for other hardware. And I've done a deep dive into this new backup standard that Trezor are using in this video over here. So we'll just leave it as the default and we will say create wallet. Basically, then we have to accept our terms over here on the Trezor. So I'll swipe up, hold to confirm. Oh, that's interesting, you feel it vibrating as you hold to confirm. That's a new feature on the Safe 5 as well. Wallet created, swipe up. There you go, backup needed. Wallet successfully created. So let's say continue to backup. And here are the warnings it gives us. They're very important security warnings, so make sure you understand what these mean. Don't just tick them. And we'll say begin backup. So now we create our backup. So it tells us here our wallet will contain 20 words in the specific order. The order is very important. It gives us the warnings again. And it gives us our recovery words. So here we go. All right, so that is our first word. 
we'll grab our recovery sheet and we'll start copying these words down onto here in order. Okay, so we've written those words down and now we hold to confirm. Oop, continue holding. Now we check the backup. And check word three, which is academic. And that's it. So I only checked three of the 20 words, which is very similar to previous Trezor models. So we'll take that, store it in a secure place. Now back over here on Trezor Suite, we can say continue to pin. And I'll just set a very simple pin for the video. So we'll swipe up to turn on pin protection and I'll just make it one, two, three, four. There we go, swipe up. Okay, so we'll say continue. We'll just leave it as the defaults and there is our Trezor set up and ready to go. So we'll say access suite. Now I won't worry about a passphrase, so we'll just say standard wallet. All right, so let's just demonstrate sending and receiving some funds. So if I click here on Bitcoin and say receive BTC, and say show full address, basically I will see the address over here. There we go. So I can see the receive address just there. Why don't I press this button up here? There we go. I can actually also, if I press the top right button, see a QR code. So I could scan this QR code directly off my hardware wallet to send the funds there. I can also see the account info, which is great. I can see the derivation path and the account type. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But if you do, this is really good that you can see it there. Uh, and I also can just cancel the receive workflow if I want. But that address there matches what I'm seeing on the screen. So I will just swipe up and tap to continue. There we go. And I'll just send some Bitcoin to that address. All right, those funds are on their way. So I'll just close that. And if I go over into dashboard, I should see it. Oh, there it is. So I can actually see that transaction already showing up as unconfirmed, which is great. All right, so let's just demonstrate sending those funds. One of the great things with Trezor Suite is I don't have to wait for that to be confirmed. So I'll just say send, and I'll just put my tip address in there. There we go, just send it back to my tip wallet. I'll just say send max and I'll leave the rest of this alone because the defaults in Trezor Suite are often very good. So I'll just say review and send. And there we go. So basically here I can confirm that the recipient address on the hardware device matches the address that I expected when I was creating the transaction in Trezor Suite. It looks good. Just like before, there's also this little option in the top right corner where I can view the account info to see where it is being sent from or cancel it if I don't want to sign it. And uh, basically, if I'm happy with that, I can just swipe up. I can swipe up to confirm the amount. And basically, it gives me a summary of the transaction and the fees. And if I'm happy with all of that, I can just swipe up. And I hold it down. It's vibrating as I hold it. And there we go. Transaction is signed. And over here in Trezor Suite, I can just click Send. And there we go. Now, all of the same functionality that you would be used to on a Trezor T is here in the Safe 5, and really not a whole lot has changed in terms of how it all works with Trezor Suite. Uh, we can see that all the same coins and chains are supported at the moment. If we go into settings, uh, we can see all of the same kinds of device settings are in there, including the new Create Multi Share Backup feature. We can also switch to Bitcoin only firmware if we want to do that, as well as do things like enable and disable PIN, uh, passphrase change the device name and also you know change the device home screen to be something else like that you can also turn the haptic feedback on and off and choose things like how long we want it to take to auto lock or just wipe the device with a factory reset or set up a wipe code which creates a special uh, unlock pin that will wipe the device if it is entered and that is our wipe code. So if we try and unlock the device with that pin, it will wipe the device. Then there's also advanced features down here, like being able to install custom firmware or turn off the device check. If you have to even ask what these last two are, just don't touch them unless you're doing things like building your own firmware from source. In terms of other standard Trezor features, the Safe 5 will also work really nicely with your standard Android smartphone or tablet. You can either download Trezor Suite for mobile and just use that as an app or you can actually just do everything in a Chrome-based browser. So I'll just connect this up using the bundled USB-C cable. And basically from here, we can just say use Trezor Suite for web. If I say find Trezor, you'll notice I have to actually unlock this device before it will see the Trezor, so I'll just unlock that. 
There we go. Now it's offering to open it with green wallet, which is Blockstream Green. I have that installed here. So in this case, I'll just say cancel because I want to use it in Trezor Suite, not in green. So I'll select the Trezor Save 5, say connect, say OK, and there we go. So now we are in Trezor Suite with the standard screen we have on desktop. And once we've logged into that device, we can see that all of the same sorts of things we had in Trezor Suite on desktop are available here, uh, including the ability to you know, manage all of the settings of our device and so on. And this is also a good spot just to throw in the reminder that while using it with your mobile device, you know, Android, smartphone, tablet, or whatever is great. If you are someone who's running an iPad or an iPhone, unfortunately, that functionality will not be available. This is not something Trezor can fix. It is a design choice by Apple. iPhone and iPad users can use Trezor Suite Lite to sort of have, you know, watch only view of your balances, but unfortunately, you will not be able to use your iPad or iPhone to be able to, you know, sign transactions update the firmware, set up the device, and so on. This is also a good spot to point out that the Safe 5 supports the same sort of functionality as the Safe 3 and the Trezor T when it comes to passphrase. And you can just enter it using your phone or PC just with your keyboard like that, or you can actually enter your passphrase on the device itself meaning that even if there is malware on your computer, it's not going to be able to record or keylog the passphrase that you enter. This is also a good spot to mention that the haptics on the Safe 5 don't just vibrate when you're doing a long press to confirm a transaction, but also give you a little vibration every time you press one of the uh, buttons on the touchscreen, you know, similar to a smartphone or something else like that. That, at least to me, makes the touchscreen feel a little bit nicer to use on the Safe 5 when compared to the previous Trezor T. And the last little feature that I'll mention relates to the micro SD slot. Now, the important thing to understand with these Trezors is the micro SD slot on this doesn't work in the same way as something like a cold card. You can't just you know, shove a transaction into the micro SD slot and run this uh, totally independently of a computer. However, you can use this micro SD slot for a feature called SD Protect. I run through SD Protect in this video over here, and this functionality is also available on the Trezor Safe 5 and if you turn it on, can add an additional layer of security to the login process for your Trezor. And while the Safe 5 having a secure element now means that SD Protect isn't really important in the same way uh, that it could have been for the Trezor 5, you may still find it to be a feature that is useful if you're wanting to add sort of a second factor to be required for you to be able to unlock your Trezor. Things like being able to use this as a hardware authenticator are still there and work just the same as they did on a Trezor T. There we go. You can also use it with other wallet software that supports Trezor and most of that should work just fine. You will need to be mindful that there will be some software that will not recognize the new model and will need to wait until the vendor releases an update before it will work out of the box with the Safe 5. The changes required to add support for the Safe 5 are quite straightforward, so as long as your wallet software is still actively being developed or maintained, you should expect to see support in the next little while, though depending on the release cycle of your wallet software, that could take a couple of weeks or maybe even a couple of months. The vendor supplied software with Trezor Suite, as well as the documentation that Trezor provide, is also excellent, so again, a great option for folk even if you are new. The other thing to mention while we're here is just like all previous Trezor devices, the firmware is fully open source and also is capable of being verified through deterministic builds. On the hardware front, the hardware for the Safe 5 was actually just added. So you can actually jump onto the GitHub repo for that and see things like a schematic as well as what the PCB view should look like. So again, a fantastic device on the open source front for both software and hardware. And the last interesting thing I'll mention in terms of doing a deep dive into the data sheets and stuff is that while the Trezor T and the Trezor Safe 3 use the same uh, family of microcontrollers as an STM32F4 MCU, um, the Trezor Safe 5 actually uses a much newer STM32U5 series of MCU. The STM32U5 actually does have a suite of new uh, security and anti-tamper mechanisms built into the hardware itself that have also been enabled in the Trezor firmware. So uh, while it's important to say that the key uh, thing that adds the physical security to the Safe 3 and the Safe 5 is the Optiga secure element that is in there, security is about layers and every little bit of extra protection does help. And speaking of layers of security, the very last single demo is the wipe pin. So I set it to be 0000, zero, zero, zero before and this should wipe the device. There we go, wipe code entered, all data has been erased. All right. Summary time. So the main thing to understand about the Trezor Safe 5 is it is really just a bit of a refresh of the Model T. 
the functionality of the Trezor Safe 5 is all pretty much the same as what we had in the Model T, with the only real differences being the addition of a secure element in the Model 5 to boost the physical security of the device, and the addition of the haptics, that is the ability for the uh, Safe 5 to be able to give it a bit of a vibrate or a rumble uh, when you are confirming certain actions on the device. Other than that, all of the functionality from the T is there in the 5 with a bit of a visual refresh and a bit of a slick uh, sort of appearance compared to the old Trezor T. Things like the updated backup standard that Trezor have rolled out as default with the Trezor Safe 5 are still available on the Trezor T or even the Trezor Safe 3 as long as you are running the most recent firmware. If you're someone who's tossing up between a Trezor Safe 5 and a Trezor Safe 3 and wondering whether it's worth the extra price, really the only thing you need to consider is whether you are interested in the color touchscreen of a Trezor Safe 5 versus the smaller black and white screen and the two button interface on the Trezor Safe 3. Because in terms of functionality on the software side, they are both identical. They both what same coins, same chains, uh, same backup standards and everything else like that. It really just comes down to which you think would be easier easier to use. Overall, the Trezor Safe 5 is a great refresh on what was an excellent product from a company with a fantastic reputation and huge amount of experience in the space. You know, it's a device you cannot go wrong with recommending to anyone who is either new in the space or even an advanced user who has been around for a while. I've added it onto my hardware wallet comparison website and if you think that a Trezor Safe 5 would help boost the security of your setup and help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. Otherwise, if you have any questions about the device itself or any comments, uh, if you've tried to use it, you know, just leave a reply and I'll do my best to answer all of them. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.